Eurasia is the largest continent of our planet. These boundless steppes and mighty mountains became the cradle of the Turkic world thousands of years ago. I am Samat Olgbay, a journalist and researcher. I follow in the footsteps of our ancestors, in the footsteps of the Turkic tribes and people who engendered a great nomadic civilization, who left our steps and lived in different parts of the world. The school of nomads, studying the past, creating the present to build the future. As a journalist who has traveled to various countries, I can say with confidence that if you want to learn more about the culture of the people, touch its roots, immediately leave the cities of this country and go to its most remote villages. Actually, that's exactly what I did. My fascinating journey through Kyrgyzstan continues. And I, depending on my own experience and pursuing the call of my heart, set off to the southernmost point of the country, to the Alai Valley. So, what is the Alai Valley? This is a wide, intermountainous area, stretching from west to east between the Alai and Zalai ranges. The Zalai range forms the northern border of the Pamirs. The highest point is Lenin Peak, a favorite peak of climbers. The average height of the valley is 3,000 meters. In deep antiquity, a giant glacier was located at the place of the basin, traces of which can be seen to this day. With its mass, it leveled and smoothed the mountainous soil. The first stop on my way is the mountain village of Gulcha, the regional center of the Alai district. The main sightseeing place of the village is a museum dedicated to a prominent statesman and military leader of the 19th century. A talented politician and simply a wise woman, the legendary Kurmanjan Datka, whose headquarters were here, not far from Gulcha. Datka is a high rank that was most often rewarded by male rulers. Kurmanjan received this rank after the death of her spouse, an influential ally feudal lord. Then the reins of power took Kurmanjan into own hands and became a real protector and leader of the ally Kyrgyz. She is rightly named the ally queen, queen of the south and even the mother of the nation. She was a very wise politician. She always stood on the protection of the interests of her people. When the Russians came, she diplomatically achieved that they would not take taxes from her people and would not take the land and also locals would not clash with visitors. Listening to the stories of local historians and descendants of the great Kurmanjan Datka, I was once again convinced that only a Turkic woman can be a wise commander for her army and a good mother for her people. The road to the highland meadows lies through the Alai Range and Taldik Pass. Here the altitude reaches 3,615 meters. This one just takes your breath away. After all, 
I'm above the clouds. Ala is the most unique region not only of Kyrgyzstan, but of the whole of Central Asia. To this day, many residents of the valley adhere exclusively to the nomadic way of life. So here you can get acquainted with the original Kyrgyz life and feel the flavor of the nomadic culture. Numerous mountain slopes are full of farms and summer camps for cattle grazing. The local population breeds yak, granting ox. According to the Allies, people in the village of Sarimagol can be proud of the largest livestock, where I arrived and first went to the local village council. Hello. Hello. How are you? Thank you, good. Welcome to Alai, our mountain village, Sarimagol. You're right, the people and nature of our land are unique. Despite the fact that we live high in the mountains, we have a well-developed animal husbandry. In general, you did the right thing to come to us. In Soviet times, Saramagol and the surrounding land were given to Tajikistan. That was in 1947. Territories were returned to Kyrgyzstan only in 2004. Surprisingly, during all 60 years, the ally Kyrgyz, being actually citizens of another country, were able to preserve the ancient culture and traditions. Alai is a high mountain valley with magnificent meadows and therefore local farmers mostly breed yaks here. Yes, yak is a feature of our area. You should definitely visit the farm. Of course, with pleasure. I heard a lot about these highland animals. I admit, one of my goals on this trip is to see real yaks. Fine. Our owl may still be proud of an old headdress, Kalyak, which is worn exclusively by Sarumagol women. Kalyak is a very old piece of clothing. We inherited it from the Pamir Kyrgyz. So I advise you to definitely meet our local grandmothers. They all wear kalyak. I will meet them, and as they say, better to see the ones than hear a hundred times. Let's start with visiting the farm. And after that, let's go meet the ally grandmothers. Fine, let's go. Yes, go. The most interesting part begins. Now I will get acquainted with one of the oldest activity of the ally Kyrgyz. I am going to the farm where there are yaks. From a distance, these animals look like cows. But in fact, of course, they differ from the usual cows. First of all, I decided to get acquainted with the owner of the farm, who will tell a lot of interesting things about these animals. Let's start right away with the story. What kind of animals are these? How long have the Kyrgyz bred them? Mm -hmm. Even our ancestors were engaged with the breeding of yaks. The Kyrgyz are nomadic people, and therefore 
these animals have always been great helpers. They were used during roaming, people consumed their meat and milk, and strong lassos were made from yak wool. Plus, yaks stand called well. Yes, the yaks are well adapted to the high mountain climate. Their important feature is that one yak can lift a weight of up to 200 kilograms. If you want to use them as a transport, yaks should be tamed specially. But on this farm, semi-wild yaks are bred. Since I'm on your farm, I would like to be useful here. For example, I want to help here on the farm, maybe I will graze yaks. Good idea, time for dinner. It's time to get the herd closer to the farm. You mean those who have gone far? Yes, those. Should I go on the foot? You can walk and you can ride a donkey. And there is a donkey? Great, I've never sat on a donkey. I'm very interested, let's get started. Dear viewers, I am the son of the great Kazakh steppes. If I ride then only on fast horses, I've never ridden on donkeys. Kazakhs say it is better to fall from his horse than the donkey. So I'll be careful. Like this. And it is not dangerous so much. Well, how is it? Let's go chase yaks. I admit, honestly, in childhood, I really wanted to ride it on a donkey. Who knew that my childhood dream would come true thousands of kilometers from home, here in the Alai Valley. So yak is a hoofed mammal. The height of an adult individual can reach 2 meters at the withers. It weighs almost half a ton. It has a long hair that hangs down from the body and almost completely covers the legs. Its homeland is considered Tibet. I am Aldar. I am Aldar. I'm a beardless cheater. Not only a beard, I have no whiskers. It is me, riding on a donkey. I remember the hero of Kazakh fairy tales, Aldar Kose. In general, quite convenient transportation, I tell you. It goes smoothly does not make me dizzy. I'm Aldar, I'm Aldar, I'm a beardless cheater. Today scientists divide yaks into two species, domesticated and wild. Historically, wild yaks are recorded in Tibetan chronicles as one of the great evils, dangerous to humans. In Tibetan, wild yak, unlike domestic ones, is called drong. The yak is well adapted to the conditions of the highlands. It has larger lungs and a heart in comparison with bulls in lowland areas. Yak blood can carry more oxygen. The shortcoming is poor tolerance to low altitudes and overheating at temperatures above 15 degrees. Now I will try to milk the yak, and then with pleasure I'll drink tea with yak milk. I will try various dairy products. You have already seen how I milk both cows, mares and even camels. I'm going to milk the yak for the first time. We're going to try. It gives a little milk, yes? Apparently, the calf already drunk enough. That seems to be all. Very little. In the 
Well, yes, if the calf is constantly near the mother, then of course we will get 300 grams of milk. Apparently still need to milk other females. Come on. Yes, compared to cows, yak females produce much less milk. They are semi-wild and I am not experienced so I did not manage to milk a lot and I wanted to try and make sour cream from their milk and kefir. But the hostess has stocks of a variety of dairy products. So today, I will have dinner exclusively with Yak's milk delicacies. Here you are, sour cream. Try kefir, help yourself. Is it all from yak milk? Yes, all the products I make from their milk. And kefir and butter and curd too. What a delicious milk! Try it! And how does this milk differ from cow's milk? It is more thick and fat. We get the milk a little, but it is very nutritious. High calorie, yes? Yes. I have already said that yaks are also excellent transport. And since I have traveled thousands of kilometers to get acquainted with this amazing animal, I think I should definitely ride them. For this, I went to another farm where the yaks are very tame. My companion's name is Mamat Musa. They say this man can restrain the most obstinate yak. I like your village very much. Thank you. Tell me more about your yaks. I would say that yaks are the basis of Kyrgyz animal husbandry. Mm -hmm. After all, our ancestors from time immemorial breed them. Yaks are very unpretentious because they are semi-wild and therefore they can live peacefully on the grass. In general, they are inexpensive. Of course, Today the number of yaks has decreased quite a lot. Only recently, people began to re-engage in their breeding. Mm -hmm. The main enemy of the yaks is the wolf. In the mountains, they can easily kick a calf. According to the farmer, there are enough wolves in these parts in the mountains, young yaks are at great risk. Therefore, residents of this village are trying to keep their livestock directly next to their homes. Perhaps that is why the yaks on this farm are not so shy, I would say quite tame. We even have games with participation of yaks. Now we will show you a few of them. For example, there is a national game, fighting on yaks. There is still a tug of war, also on yaks. We are reviving our ancient games. It's great. I would like to participate in these competitions. Would you teach me? Of course, we will teach. We will put you in a saddle and show you how to play. Uh -huh. Thank you. I cannot wait to start the game. It seems to be very interesting. Here I just leave my bag. I will take part in two competitions. First, I will try to fight while sitting on the yak. And then, we will drag the rope, also riding yaks. I chose this handsome. He seems calm, but in the saddle will have to hold tight. 
There is even a group of fans gathered. Some shout, Samad Kazakhstan. Others actively support my opponent. By the way, it seems to me that we have completely different weight categories with him and in his favor. But I don't have a choice. I hope only for good luck. Yes, indeed, the opposite side turned out to be quite strong. It seems to me that he didn't make any special efforts. But I didn't even understand how I fell off my yak. It all happened so unexpectedly. A split second and I'm out of the saddle. But I'm not giving up. There's another game ahead. Here it seems victory depends more on animals, not on people. We tied the ends of the lasso on our yaks, pinched the middle of the playing field and were ready to start. I thought that after the first match, my fans were already disappointed in me. But no, I hear their support and I feel confident. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had to win, and I won. I'm very happy, thanks to my yak. Well done. It was he who defeated the enemy with his strength, and the fans seem happy more than me. Thanks to all the people and yaks. Today I learned a lot about these amazing animals. I have to move on. I also wanted to meet the ally grandmothers. I found merry old woman in a local culture house. It seems I came very on time. Obviously, ally grandmothers are preparing for an important event. What are they all smart and how beautiful they sing? Amazing! Hello! Welcome, son! Thank you. How are you? Well, we are glad to welcome you in our Aul Sarimogol. Thank you. I came to meet with you. Do you like our place? Oh, everything's fine. Today I visited the farms where yaks are bred. I even fed them, milked and of course tasted real yak milk. I am full and satisfied. And here I see you do the lasso. Is that also made from yak wool? Yes, it is yak wool. After shearing, their wool is divided into two parts, soft and coarse. With soft we fill various blankets and pillows. And out of coarse wool, we make lassos. Today, our ally women even make massagers from yak wool. After all, yak wool is very useful for the human body. And will you teach me? Of course. Take a piece from this pile of whipped wool. Put your hands in water. Now you hold 
I will show how to twist. Hold tight. And so you twist this way. Yes, it turns out like a plated braid. You know, when I just came in your room, first of all, I paid attention to your beautiful headdresses. You know, when I just came in your room, first of all, I paid attention to your beautiful headdresses. Tell me what they're called. Why are they of such forms? And is there any meaning in these intricate shawls? This headdress is worn only by ally women. It is named Kaliak. Kaliak. Yes, it consists of a tube taker. First, put it on. Then, put these earrings on top. Behind the tube taker, there's a sack for braids. Yes, you heard it right. They say it was like during the time of Genghis Khan. So there is a braid hiding inside. Yes, another part of the Kaliak are such hair ornaments. Yeah, pretty heavy. Yes, thanks to the Shashbao, the braids were not unraveled. After them, Kaliak was put on his head. This is 50 meters of fabric. 50 meters? Exactly. We Kyrgyz are nomadic people, and therefore, we try to find practicality everywhere. If a baby was born on the way, the cloth from the Kaliak served as a diaper, and if a person suddenly died on the way, the Kaliak turned into grave clothes of the deceased person. Yes, it's not easy for women in a nomadic world. Exploring the traditions and characteristics of nomads, I constantly find a variety of interesting facts confirming the practicality of our ancestors. Here I learned another interesting detail. They say that in the old days, instead of the beads, women trimmed the kaliak with various grains, nuts, dried berries and even pieces of bread. In the harsh winter cold, women could feed their children with such provisions, soon on a beautiful kaliak. Grandmothers show their works without stop. One work is more beautiful than the other. Real masters. And they weave carpets and mats. I would like to learn crafts from them. But I don't have time for all of that. Thank you for your time. You introduced me to your crafts. Let's take a picture for the memory. We are Kazakhs when we want to express our gratitude, we say Rakhmet, and the Kyrgyz say John Rakhmat, that is, big thanks. So I want to tell the grandmothers, John Rakhmat. They have met us with songs and saw of the same way. They are such music people. It's been a very emotional day. I was able to do everything. And I got acquainted with the grandmothers and visited the farm. So much emotions, words cannot convey. I saw real yaks and even rode them. Indeed, the Ally Valley is a unique place where truly amazing people live.